Hello and welcome. My name is Sia from HarmonicTradingOnline.com and basically in today's video session what I want to go through with you are pretty much the ups and the downs of trading because most of the time you find that marketers brokers uh, generally have this agenda of thinking that, that trading is, is easy but when it comes down to the truth of the matter there's three components that as a, a trader you have to work on and it has been a journey for myself as well and it's something that I develop each and every day in terms of my, my trading so basically the first is psychology because you will find that in the markets the markets move rapidly the markets also move in a slow pace so keeping your emotions in check at all times is the number one key because once you start to get emotional that's when things actually start to go wrong in the markets secondly is your trade trading plan if you're the type of person who just enters the market and just thinks of making money you're gonna have a problem because if you cannot stick to your trading plan chances are you won't be a consistently profitable trader and thirdly will have to be money management well you might find that uh, in many websites or places that you might you might search on the internet the number one element that even most marketers focus on is money management or the money making side of trading but the truth of the matter is trading in itself there is other components that i that are important as i mentioned trade plan psychology also money management but money management in essence isn't that big in terms of me personally because i've seen that once you have done your back testing of your strategy as well as your forward testing as well as going live with the small amount of capital and then maybe deciding to keep on adding more capital as you grow as a trader and as you become more and more consistently profitable so money management in essence it's more like a, like a, a journey or a, a natural progression as a trader so yeah that's pretty much that's what I want to share with you um, in terms of that and secondly just want to go through my performance uh, this month in terms of March so since the, the beginning of the month the market has been pretty slow because in total when I'm looking at my books I have taken roughly about 10 trades out of that 10 you are looking at about six setups and the other four is basically a, a swing position trades that I've taken because basically my portfolio is split in two I have my day trading and I have my swing trading my day trading is where I focus a lot of, of, of energy and time on because typically my day trading I trade generally not generally consistently on a day-to-day -day basis Monday to Friday every day from 9 to 12 uh, Central African time now um, the reason why I have chosen that specific time frame is that it allows me uh, to not really have much distractions and to be able to trade uh, without uh, any restrictions 
But now there is a downside to it because you find that during that time between 9 to 12, you are looking at, uh, we are near at the close of the New York session. So that is the downside of it because the markets are pretty slow during that time. Or if they're not slow, they are really volatile and, and really, really choppy. But now the, the opportunity or the advantage of that is uh, there's more uh, harmonic patterns. But another downside is that the more patterns that I recognize, some of them pretty much give you some uh, sense of false signals. But as a trader, there's ups and there's downs and you pretty much got to stick things through. So I just want to take you through in terms of my my stats for the month of March. So from the beginning of March to mid of March, basically just to give you an idea in terms of that, that trading is more of a back and forth kind of synergy. So it's more sense of of, of like taking three steps forward, two steps back, four steps forward, six steps back, three steps forward, two, te- two steps back. So it's pretty much a back and forth thing. Okay. So, pretty much since we started, okay, since I have started pretty much um, in, in the month. So, basically, as you can see, as you can see right here, looking at pretty much... Uh, I would say my first trade typically yeah my first trade for for the month of March looking at, at, at me gaining 16 pips second trade I lost 44 pips so now one thing that I've noticed as a, uh, as a trader one thing that you might find that uh, I'd have to say as a rookie trader is once you start to hit a string of losses, your emotions start to, to kick in. But now, the problem is, if you allow that to happen, uh, you end up not being in control of your risk. So the key element is pretty much stick with your trading plan. If you know how to stick with your trading plan, your emotions will be on check. Now, what is the motivator for, for for that? One would have to be your back testing. Personally, when I have back tested my strategies that I trade on a day to day basis, I have found that over a long period of time, they have been consistently profitable. So therefore, I have that as an edge or as an advantage in the markets. Two is pretty much trust in myself. So. In myself and in my trading plan so it's, it's the ability to be disciplined and, and, and basically to stick through with it so as you can see first trade 16 pips second trade minus 44 uh, so that means I've actually lost being uh, hitting a drawdown of, of 28 pips third trade 56 pips uh, that I've gained uh, giving me 28 pips in profit, banged another 38, gave me 66, and then currently, look, minus 9, it came down to 57 pips, minus 18, came down to 39, minus 25 pips, came down to 14, and as we progress uh, uh, through the week, I'd have to see in terms of how I perform, but basically for me, I don't really care in terms of uh, each and individual. So I'm not basically married to a particular trade setup or a particular trade. 
I'm looking at my trades for that. So you can, as you can see here, this is my equity curve, pretty much for this month. Uh, it's that outside return, new structure high, outside return, hopefully by, by this coming week, we hit new structure highs, or we break, uh, maybe hit that 60 pips higher, bank some, bank some more money, could lose some more money. But basically, currently, I am in, in profit by 14 pips or so. So more or less, slightly above break even for the month, which is not bad. Considering that the, the markets have been slow, like really, really slow. And if they are moving, and it's just been really, really volatile. Okay, so lastly, I just want to go through with you in terms of how I do my analysis. And for this example, I will go through the Aussie, yeah, Australian dollar. So let's just get to it. Okay, so basically for me, when I do my analysis, it's important to start off from the high time frame right down to my day trading time frame. So where even if I'm looking for swing trading opportunities or day trading opportunities, the daily chart is the key. May happen that I'll go to the weekly, rarely though. But it does happen that I can go through the to the weekly chart just to look for structure. Because the key thing is to look for structure. Structure leaves clues. As you can see in this example, we've had the market resisting here. We've had support, market break, broke lower. So giving you a signal that the market wants to move lower. And then tested resistance failed again. So basically that's how it is. It's about structure reading. So looking at structure. 10 out of 10 traders, I'm sure, would agree with me that um, we are in a downtrend. And personally, I am a trend continuation trader as well as a counter trend trader. Now, there is a, 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 I'd say a difficulty when I when you become both, because a problem comes when uh, you see a counter trend opportunity, counter trend trading opportunity in a trending market. So basically, I'll go through that in terms of as playing both fields, how as a trader you would go through it and how generally I go through, through it, because currently we are in a, a, a bearish rotation in the market and there are opp there are opportunities uh, in the day trading time frame where I would actually look to get long but let's go through with it okay so basically we can identify right here that the market has had was put in support here however we have broken and closed below. So my, my mind will be thinking short, 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 short. And then what happens? Boom. Market breaks the previous day's lows to create new structure highs. Pretty much for for the 12th from the, from the 11th. Okay. And then boom. We pretty much hit, hit a pullback or an outside return. So, as a as playing both fields, what would be my next step? Okay, so I'm looking for structure. So, typically, this zone right here would be my resistance. So for now, I won't be paying too much attention in terms of this structure because we are pretty much about 250 pips away from it. But we could come through to it or even fail and hit lower prices. So I would have to, I'd pretty much go down to a lower time frame, which is the four hour. 
and look for uh, pretty much both counter trend trading opportunities as well as trend continuation type but then it all boils down to this one secret your reward to risk now if i were a bull and i'm looking to get long first things first will be again where structure right here this is my near term structure if i'm a bull i'm looking to play a double bottom here for a bounce to the high side and that's pretty reasonable however if i am a bear in this instance what i'm looking for i'm looking for trend continuation momentum what i'll be looking for is for price action to break and close below previous structure support and for the market to pretty much sink to that low side so as you can see right here on the on the, on the four hour charts there pretty much isn't that much action let's go down to the hourly on the hourly chart we might see if again if i am planning to get short there's a harmonic pattern here bad pattern now this is how bad pattern is drawn you've got your impulse leg or your x this is where it starts next will be a a point so it's x to a a to b at 50 percent right b to c and then c to d at 80, 886 completion point so that is my bad pattern now with that again goes down to the basicalities of risk to reward so looking at this this is how much i would be willing to risk on this bad pattern let's take a look in terms of how many pips is that you're looking at about 75 pips depending on your pole on your risk factor it depends on how you would get involved you might say if your risk factor is say maximum risk is 50 you will look for alternative ways to still get involved but provided that we've hit the potential reversal zone for the market to tank lower next would be if i'm looking to get long you could take what's known as an aggressive c trade now an aggressive c is basically where you identify a harmonic pattern and the c leg being at this point is where i'll be looking to buy so we have again what structure structurally structure leaves clues yes so right here We've had support market came back test tested uh, this level you can see that we currently have two bullish bars next pull some fibs swing high swing low we come to 382 382 is an important uh, pretty much is a significant uh, fib number we've got that 382 next Ask yourself, do I have a harmonic move? Potentially, maybe, yes, no. Swing high, swing low. Again. Boom. Uh, I'll just say from there, yeah. So, do we have a harmonic move to the downside yep we pretty much do but it's 
bit higher than I would anticipate. But either way, we have a harmonic move or an ABCD pattern as is known. So we have an ABCD pattern. Again, let's check. We have Oops. we have an ABCD pattern. which comes to our 382 zone. So, if you are what's known as a CTS trader, you could be having some ticks there in terms of what an ABCD pattern, what points you give it, uh, a 382 FIB expansion zone, what points you give it, structure, and so on. So, if I am looking to get long, this is not a too bad of a, of a place, to look to get long again stops stops would be below structure or below support and we look to ride the market higher maybe to our potential reversal zone so our risk would look something like that and our reward again would look something like that So, considering this trade setup, if you are wrong, you lose this much. Whereas, if, if you were, so if you were wrong, you'd lose in this, if you want to get short, you've got a potential of losing about 80 pips. But if you are to take this trade, you have a potential of losing about 73 or 75 yeah 79 and your reward so it's pretty much almost the same yeah so it's it's about picking your pick and, and seeing which one works for you or where the market decides to go so pretty much that's how I would analyze uh, swing trading as well as how I generally do my analysis. But there are other dynamics to it. But generally, looking at a simple harmonic pattern, this is how I would look at it. In as as taking a short entry, which is more simple, though, just follow the the bearish bets. Easy. Have uh, sell orders there stops above uh, structure easy however second trade setup where you're looking to get long there's other dynamics you're looking at structure you're looking at abcd patterns you're looking at Fib you're looking at fibonacci expansions you also could be looking at at rsi right here as you can see rsi is overbought so you look at that in terms of this giving me a signal that uh, the market wants to push up higher. I have, again, here if I'm a bull, what's this? I've got some divergence. Again, what do I have? I've got some hidden divergence. So there are other alternatives you know, when it comes to this. Where you're looking at it. So you're looking at the market reaching exhaustion when it comes it from it selling you have again if i'm a, if you want to add cases and cases and, and reasons you have uh, a higher low indicating the market is pushing higher so these are the things that you have as a trader to to, to know and to sit down and take the time to actually learn because once you do that 
it's actually liberating because it gives you the power pretty much to be in control uh, and yeah and allows you to follow your plan as you set it set your plan as for me all that is in my trading plan and a bit more when it comes to filtering my trades because there is also another level in terms of how do I enter this is just analysis there's ways and how do I enter how do I specifically set stock how do I set targets and if I were to go through the whole process it would pretty much take the whole day so with that in mind be safe happy trading